My name is Jenny Grandis. I became a physician scientist because I learned during my training as an otolaryngologist head and neck surgeon that even when I mastered the art of head and neck surgery, I successfully cut out my patients' tumors. Half of them still died of their cancer, and those who survived suffered lifelong consequences of their treatment. A few years ago, one of my closest friends developed a head and neck cancer caused by the human papilloma virus, or HPV. HPV head and neck cancer is exploding in instance, and today at UCSF and throughout the United States, 80% of the tumors in the back of the throat are caused by HPV. My friend Kevin nearly died of a bleed following his surgery, and today he has to drink a glass of water with every bite of food because of swallowing problems related to the treatment toxicity. So our laboratory is really dedicated to understanding the key alterations in individual patients' tumors so that we can develop more effective and less toxic treatments. We noted that mutations of an oncogene called PIK3CA were very common in head and neck cancer, occurring in over half of HPV head and neck cancers. So in collaboration with our colleagues here at UCSF, including Nevin Krogan, Luke Gilbert, Matt Spitzer, Max Crummel, and Natalia Yura, we are carefully mapping the genetic and protein interactions, as well as the immune profile conferred by each PIK3CA mutation, and frankly, the other common mutations in HPV head and neck cancer, using a variety of exciting cutting edge approaches. But how does this information help people like my friend Kevin? A few years ago, there was a report that patients with colon cancer who happened to be taking aspirin as a chemopreventive agent were benefited if their tumor contained a PIK3CA mutation. So we hypothesized that head and neck cancer patients whose tumors had this mutation might have improved survival if they happened to be taking aspirin. To test this hypothesis, we sequenced nearly 300 tumors and went back to the patient's electronic medical record to try to determine who was taking aspirin for other reasons for at least six months after their head and neck cancer diagnosis. What we found was nothing short of startling. If the tumor lacked a PIK3CA mutation, it didn't matter if they took aspirin or not. Their survival was exactly the same. However, if their tumor had a mutation and they happened to be taking a baby aspirin, their survival at five years went from 25% to 80%. So we've now gone back to our laboratories and we're trying to understand the impact of these mutations on the tumor cell and on the immune system both in the preclinical setting as well as in specimens from head and neck cancer patients treated on clinical trials at UCSF. Thank you.